Hello, everyone. It's wonderful to be here. Thank you very much. So yes, te technology plays a role in our everyday lives. From driving cars to connecting to people, and one thing that it does not do is human connection. And human connection is a vital element. It is something that we cannot do without. And that's possibly why for years or decades, we have lived in tribes and in communities and in nations. Human connection is vital for our evolvement and our growth on an emotional level. And thanks to technology, we are now able to connect and communicate with people all over the world at any time of day or night. But I wonder what would happen if we took our devices and the internet away. How many of us would feel like a part of our lives is missing? The average person spends four hours a day online. Now, if you think that most of us spend eight hours a day working, possibly one to two hours commuting either way, and we should be getting six to eight hours of sleep, and then we're spending four hours online, how much time are we spending on our relationships with our partners, with our children, even with our friends and our family? So yes, technology has taken us fast forward, but I wonder if it hasn't also taken us backwards, especially when it comes to how we are having conversations. Back in ancient times, when we used to communicate through symbols and pictures. And I sometimes wonder if we don't hide behind those symbols and those pictures because we are not being honest with how we are feeling or what we would really like to say and communicate. And I also see very, every day in the work that I do the impact that technology has on families. The divorce rate is one in every two, and that is only divorces. It's not people that are cohabitating and living together. In schools, bullying is a big problem, especially in the cyber world. So technology is aiding a lot of things for us when it comes to communication, work, environments, but I also wonder how it is hampering our lives and the quality of our lives and the people in it. Children are acting out what they are not receiving at home. Gone are the days when a parent could stay at home and nurture the home and the environment for kids to grow up in because due to survival, most couples have to work these days. So children are acting out in a number of ways the things that they are not getting at home, the love, the attention, the connection. And how do we try and take care of that? Many of us give them the latest toys, the latest gadgets, the latest games, when actually what they're really crying out for is love and connection. I see it in couples that I work with every day. In fact, just this morning, my hubby and I were having this exact conversation. He's convinced that my phone is attached to my hip. I'm threatening to attach his phone to his hip because if it's not in the car, it's upstairs or it's on silent and I can never get hold of him. And he says, but I'm right here. And I go, I know, but what if it was an emergency and I needed to get hold of you? So we constantly have this conversation at home. And I can see a lot of you are smiling, so you know what I'm talking about. So my challenge to you is, yes, we want to change the world. Yes, we want to develop the latest technology, the latest app. We want to be innovative and we want to be creative. But I want to challenge you to do that in your relationships. I want to challenge you to unplug and disconnect from the world just for five minutes. The world will still be there when you come back. Be fully present in your relationship with your partner, with your children, but also in the workplace. 
Considering that we spend eight hours a day in the workplace, how much time do you really take to get to know the people that you are working with? Or do you just greet them as you waltz down the corridor to your desk before you plug in and start working away? How many of you really know what's going on in your colleagues' lives, the names of their children, their birthdays? So yes, technology plays a large role, but at the same time, I think it's hindering us too. British anthropologist Robin Dunbar says the magic number when it comes to the quality relationships is 150. The minute we go over 150 relationships, we start losing that sense of connection. Now, I don't know about you, but I did a quick count the other day, and I couldn't even reach 100 of my closest friends. So no wonder we are obsessed with the likes and the shares and the tweets and the number of followers that we have. But what does that really mean? in terms of who you are as a person, and the quality and the value of the relationships in your life, and how much time are you spending with those people. Because how you leave people feeling, how you leave them at the end of the day when you walk away, is how will they will remember you forever. So the next time you wanna pick up your phone and send a message to a friend or a family member, either pick up the phone and have a conversation with them, or actually go and meet with them and spend some face-to-face -face time with them and build that connection. Because when times are hard and we look for support, who do we turn to first? Our relationships, our partners, our family, our friends. And in the business world, who is it that opens doors for us? Who is it that helps us get places? It's our relationships whether it be mentors, whether it be our managers, whether it be our role models that we look up to. But if you do not make time for your relationships, then over time, you will not have relationships. Thank you very much. <laughs>